Welcome back to the letters that John wrote. We are in the first letter that John wrote in the second chapter, and we have been learning about who is a Christian and who isn't. And we've also seen John clearly say that those who deny the deity of Christ, and of course God, they aren't a part of us. Even though they may try to get involved with us, they soon separate. And they are not of Christ. They are antichrist, or they are opposing Christ. And that's not a prophetic antichrist like is so often taught in error. But it is the antichrist spirit that he's talking about there. And he goes on to tell us that if we know Jesus, we know the Father. So it's important that we understand that it's not just good enough to say, I believe in God. It's, do you have salvation through the shed blood of Christ in his atoning work at Calvary that brings you into a relationship with God? For Jesus is that bridge. We saw that very clearly. He says, stick to the basics. Don't let people add stuff or take stuff away. You know what was taught to you at the beginning and hang on to that. That's the truth. Go for it. And we're going to pick up in verse 25. He says, This is the promise which he himself, that's Jesus, made to us. And then he says, here's what it is. Eternal life. In other words, real life comes in Christ. Jesus said in John 10, I've come to bring life and life more abundantly. A lot of life. Not just what you can do by buying and selling and having a good time and enjoying the physical aspects of life through your five senses, but real life in the spirit. And therefore, that life lasts forever and ever with him. We see that in John 3.16. He says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. And when we believe in him, we accept his salvation and forgiveness from our sins. We don't just say, well, I believe he lived, or I believe he was a person, or I believe he was the Son of God. What did he do for you? That's the transforming transaction of faith that we must do. John 14, verses 2 and 3, he says, you know, I've gone to prepare a place for you, and if I've gone there, I'll come and get and get you. My father's house has many places for many people. And so therefore we know that talks about our eternal life or the life after this mortality that we're experiencing right now. Very, very interesting because he makes that promise and he wants us to know that it's not just about living here on earth abundantly in his spirit living in us, but it's also that we can have eternal life with him forever and ever in eternity. And that's really hard to describe. But it's beautiful and way beyond our imagination. Mm. goes on in verse 26 to say, These things I have written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. Every generation of the church has been led astray in some form of deception where the wolf comes into the sheepfold and steals the innocent, or not the innocent, but the younger lambs who have not grown in their faith away. Jesus goes after them, some of them are injured, some of them come back whole, but the idea here is that there are people constantly trying to deceive people by adding to the gospel, taking away from the gospel, not, elite, not leaving it in its original form. Paul said to the Galatians in chapter 3, he says, how foolish can you be to walk away from the original gospel, the truth that I taught you? When others come in and try to deceive you, why are you foolish enough to buy into it? Some of that is because of the spiritual immaturity of some Christians who never grow in their faith because they don't get in the Word and they don't spend time praying and they don't fellowship with other Christians that can help nourish them too. Paul's very concerned about the Galatians because they had allowed people to come in and try to talk them into becoming Jews when they didn't need to be. That's a physical thing. We live in the Spirit. And that's what's very important, Paul tells the church in Corinth. We walk by faith, that's a spiritual thing, not by sight, that's a physical thing. Very important that we understand who we are in faith and our belief and our faith is extended into Christ for his salvation in our lives. So John is speaking very intensely 
about the deception that's out there. And it's always been and it always will be. That's why it's important that we understand the truth and we walk in that truth of Jesus Christ and his salvation for us. And that will transform us so that we live the way God has planned for us to live. When we do that, we are the people of God living in his kingdom. And that's why Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will go into place like it should. We'll pick up there in verse 27 the next time.